There can be quite a lot locked inside a child. Trauma from the pre-verbal stage of development. They found ways of managing painful feelings in a way that doesn't help their development. I just find it easier to be angry. I feel like I'm just going to burst. that are being turned away from treatment with the suggestion the latest figures, they're astonishing. What is happening? Our children are struggling to know how to live in today's world. They just go into this trance of nothingness. Unprecedented numbers are being diagnosed with mental health disorders, being medicated or facing a crisis of identity. When you're somebody else, you just don't feel right. This is the Tavistock and Portman. For nearly a hundred years, it's been at the forefront of exploring young minds. Basically, all my emotions look angry. Get off me! These are big decisions to make, aren't they? So where are we heading towards? Do you think about your body a lot? So what happens in these moments? I get violent. No! Demi? It's just cutting me open inside. We've seen more and more young people coming in distress, self-harming, taking risks. Things could get worse, so we need to act now. There's a line between insanity and sanity, and I have no idea where I'm at. work that we do is about trying to give these children an opportunity and to feel that their life isn't set for them by their early experiences. I feel that different futures can be created. Nell Nicholson is the head teacher of Gloucester House, a unique NHS run primary school for children with social, emotional and mental health issues. We have a very strong belief that revisiting the difficult experiences that they've had is the way that they can then function later on in society. One minute! Thursday. The children come here in order to work through some of their behaviour, and if we don't see it, how can they work it through? Oh. Oh. Hello, Luke. See that you come in, getting a bit cross. Fuck off, Lord. This is what, this what we're going to do. I'm going to give you a bit of space for a little Fuck bit. Fuck off, Will. I don't need your bullshit. Okay, but Luke, we're going to have some boundaries on <coughs> this. So you, it's all right to feel cross, and I'll give you a bit of space, but you cannot be abusing people from the sofa, okay? Fuck off, So, gentlemen, hello, sir. Most of its 18 pupils have been expelled from several schools. Without help, the future for these children is bleak. There's definitely a risk of criminality, prison, and the children that come here deserve to be helped. For them, this is the end of the line. There's nothing wrong with having feelings. Everyone has feelings. But you are still very impulsive sometimes. How am I impulsive? Do you know what impulsive means? No. Reese, come on. I've worked here for 11 years, I think it is now and I sort of fell in love with this place. I don't know of other schools where you've got clinical nurse specialists working alongside teachers and where they do such intensive psychotherapy. Okay, Rose, there we go. You need to have a little bit of time in there, okay? Um, is this a school for naughty children? Is that what this is? I don't believe in naughty children. We have to think about what that behaviour is communicating because you're just putting a sticking plaster on otherwise. OK, Reese, I'm going to come in and talk to you, OK? Uh, where's my gold? I want to do my Royal Kings outfit in.
11-year-old Josh has been at Gloucester House longer than any of the current pupils. Why did you come here in the first place? Why do you think? My old school couldn't really manage my behaviour, so uh, I, I got excluded for a long time. If I can get this right, I only went to my old school once or twice a week because I got excluded so much. And then I got excluded permanently. So they were looking for a new school and then they found this um, help you with your behaviour school called Gloucester House. And they thought, oh wow, we're gonna so send him here. And yeah, now I'm here. So Josh, can you see how 13p is smaller than 30p? Can you see that? So it's a slight trick. Josh was referred to Gloucester House when he was eight years old. Josh is an engaging and bright boy who can, at times, in his manner, seem older than his years. What one's smaller here? Because this is all it is. Zero. Imagine. Josh's birth family was chaotic and characterised by severe neglect and emotional harm. The parental relationship was volatile and unstable, with incidents of domestic violence between the couple, further compounded by alcohol and substance abuse. There were significant concerns around physical abuse of the children. Josh was removed from his birth parents at four and lived in various foster homes for two years before finally being adopted. The school described him as being quite frightening at times, became very overwhelmed by his rage. No obvious signs of remorse or regret after serious incidents. I was hurting teachers and I kept running out of the school building. And yeah, it was really difficult. After three years of intensive psychotherapy and behavioral support, staff at Gloucester House believe Josh is ready to return to mainstream school. To help Josh prepare for leaving at the end of the year, he attends a mainstream school once a week with his support worker, Shah. I was going to ask you, do you want me to wait in the classroom? Because I can just find another seat somewhere as well. But it's up to you. I'll wait in. I'm having, oh, I think I'll wait in. Outside. Yeah, I can do. I can do. It's fine. You can come in with me and then go out. Okay, no worries. That's fine. That's fine. See if I can do it by That's myself. Fine. That's fine. I think you. I think you can. That's what I was thinking. The type of trauma Josh suffered is on the rise in the UK, with nearly half a million children believed to be at risk. But distressing events that can affect a child's development can take many forms. Early trauma can mean many things. It might be direct experiences of abuse, it might be neglect, it might be domestic violence, it might be bereavement. So it can take different forms. This is Luke. He is one of the most challenging children Gloucester House has ever had. <laughs> when he arrived three years ago, any difficult feelings he had led to mindless violence. <laughs> Five days before Luke's first birthday, his brother was killed in a hit and run. He lost his brother and his mother lost her son and that had a profound effect, as that would on any parent losing a child. They've carried this as a family through the years, this very, very significant trauma. So it's a very hard thing to be born into, actually. Do you remember why you came here? Because of my needs, and um, when I got angry, then I'd get restrained, but... I've improved. I am a nice kid, but sometimes I'm just rude. He was 
extremely hard to contain over quite a long period, but he's come through amazingly. I mean, we still get quite a bit of choice language, but he is quite able to be very, very reflective afterwards. When children become violent and pose a serious risk, they are taken to a padded room called the pod to calm down. To take them there safely, trained members of staff use non-painful holds. On the last day of the spring term, and for the first time in months, Josh is taken to the pod. You need to allow staff to manage this safely ah! and keep you safe. You can't keep me safe, you are not keep me safe. What happened, Josh? You went back into the classroom and then what happened? There was lots of sort of kicking and hurting. It felt like you got quite controlling and it felt like it went on for longer than it really should have. It felt like it was quite long. How do you feel afterwards? I start to feel sadness because like, I, I, I start to regret the things that I did when I was angry. I know you seem quite cross with Shah today, but you've known Shah since you came here. I think Shah's really important to you and I think you're probably going to miss her over the holidays. Mm. Mm. And maybe it feels easier to be a bit cross with her and to feel a bit sad that you're going to miss her. They've had very difficult endings usually, whether that be to do with being removed from a family or how they've left previous schools. So it's really difficult for them. Josh, two holds today. Um, I think there's more going on. I did say. My gut feeling is that it's, yeah. it's about this ending really then very strongly mirroring Ooh, the fact that these endings coming up. Yeah, um, so I think that that sort of brought things sort of to a to right. carry for him as well. Okay. Um, okay. Ready? Come on then, take your shoes off and then you can go up and see where your bedrooms are. Oh! Two years after being taken away from their birth parents, Josh and his brothers Timmy and Reese arrive in their new family home with their adopted parents, Phil and Stig. Oh, it's turned right out there. That's your bedroom. Happy birthday, Terry! Hi. Hello. Happy birthday. That's your bedroom. Come down here. Good morning, Josh. Time to get ready. It's your bedroom now. Oh. Oh, good morning. Oh, wow. Soon after arriving, Josh started displaying worrying behaviour. Because he also moved so many times to different foster homes, uh, they are the fifth family he, he has. And um, I think in the beginning he was sort of uh, pushing constantly just to test, test us all the time, to, to test if we were going to say in then that you have to leave. Look if I'm behind you then. Okay, bye. Mm, love you lot, have a good day. And I think that's what he wanted to hear in one way, because he wanted to sort of recreate 
um, sort of that chaotic life he had in the past because that's what makes him feel safe, because that's what he know. He was very threatening in those periods, threatening to, to stab you with a knife and kill you. And, and he so was he, describing that situation yeah, back in time, he, he, how he was going yeah, to do, what he was graphic. going to, how he was going to tell yeah. the police what happened and etc. So it was, so obviously with lots of the times they're trying to be very controlling and lots of the times they're becoming also very controlling at animals because they feel they can control them even more. And um, the first time we had a babysitter just for one hour, I think the boys were very anxious that I'll be coming back. And then they took it out on Hetty, and um, as a result, that's actually just trying to suffocate her with a pillow and also trying to push the whole sofa against her to crush her. Josh was sort of um, the father figure for the two other boys and sort of looking after them or trying to feed them. Before being taken away from their birth parents, the boys would frequently be left alone all night. At an age of just one year older than Reese or two years older than and Timmy, he felt that he was the father for them. So when the boys arrived here, he didn't want to let go. He didn't want to give that responsibility to us. Josh, at age just three, would have to scavenge for food for him and his baby brothers. So did you have to look after yourself a lot when you were little? Uh, no, yeah. I had to look after them too. That's why you're alive right now. Do you remember any of that? So gloss paint you know, is going to be the best food to eat, isn't it, Josh? Uh, actually, you guys got food. I had the gloss paint. That's Didn't cool. taste nice. I don't understand. I ate it because it was the only thing in the house to eat. But you used to get food for your brothers then? Yeah. What, no big deal? And look how they repay me these days. Whoa, why is there a zombie? Why can I hear a zombie? Because he's in that little cave over there. The baby who is well enough looked after and who has parents who can really attend to them emotionally will internalise a, a sense of security, which is really the basis of their capacity to learn and their capacity to make sense of their own feelings. If that goes wrong and they find it impossible to be dependent on adults, then they're not going to be able to take in from adults what they need in order to grow up. Everything we have invested in to Josh is about giving him a future. The idea is Josh going back to mainstream school, but at the same time, is he going to manage it or is he going to be excluded again? I'm going to have to come in and take the shoes. And I would much rather prefer for you to be able to pass me the shoes. Ten-year-old Daniel Lee has just arrived at Gloucester House. I can understand that you might be feeling a bit frustrated right now, and I want to be able to help support you, but I won't be able to do that unless you're able to follow the instructions. Six months ago, Mum Danette removed Daniel Lee from her primary school, believing they couldn't keep her daughter safe. So, um, I don't know where to start. When she has one of her tizzies, I want to get up, pack my stuff and walk through my front door because I've had enough. She's a terrorist. She's just very aggressive. Right. So she'll pick up an object and hit her brother with it. She had Lacey on his back, on the floor, and she was punching him. And Lacey was trying to push her off, and she was kicking him and punching him. Thank you very much for sitting on the back bench. So now we're going to work on you being able to pass me your shoes. OK? I mean, he sounds really angry with her. 
It's not angry with her. I'm angry at myself. Okay. I'm angry at myself because she's my baby, but I still feel like I'm failing her. All I know is there is still a question mark over my daughter. Yeah. And I don't know what to do now because of that question mark. Some of them are more complicated than others in terms of how they present, and Danielle's like that. She's got quite a complex history. She might be on the autistic spectrum. It's very difficult to work out what's going on for her on any sort of given day. And she, yeah, she's a bit of an enigma, really. Danielle, we talk. <laughs> Not doing my paper. Okay. You can't make me. Right, can, can we talk rather than you getting into just running around? Yeah. Look. Right. You're absolutely right, I can't make you do it. This isn't something to try and make you feel bad. Either way, this year, Daniel Lee will sit her sats. In the past, she's never managed to complete an exam. Yeah? If you can't do it, that's okay. We're not, we're not trying to make you, we're not trying to force you into something, we're not trying to make you feel bad. We're trying to help. Yeah? I can be a nice drama queen or a bad drama queen. Do you think people think you're a bit naughty? Yeah, yes! A lot! Are you a bit naughty? <laughs> what are you? I'm a nice, sweet, beautiful right. little girl! <laughs> Who needs the help? I've heard you do reading before, lots of times. I know it's not your favourite, but it'll be OK. I don't give a shit. I care. I, I care about your learning, so I do care. But it'll be all right. We'll have a little go together. It, it's not as horrible as it sounds, Luke. As well as his emotional issues, 11-year-old Luke has learning difficulties. 7, 12, 16 words. Luke's finding it particularly difficult at the moment. Part of his experience of learning is a sense of not being able to do things and a sense of feeling inadequate. So the focus isn't necessarily to get him to read, but to think that he can. This is your bit, Lukey. Right, well, I can't force you, mister, but I can only explain why it's really important that you do do this. Right. They all have issues around control. They may have had experiences where they've had way too much control than they should have had for a child, and they haven't had adults around them who can provide the boundaries. I want you to take that tape away from your nose and your mouth. So you have a clear instruction, I want you to take the tape away from your nose and your mouth. If you're really struggling to do that, Luke, what we'll have to do is come alongside you and do that for you, because at the moment you're not being safe. Are these adults safe enough? Are these adults going to be able to keep the boundaries with me? Are these adults going to be able to be adults? So in the next 10 seconds, I expect that tape to be away from your face. Thank you for doing that, Luke. Behind the control is masses and masses of anxiety. I can make people do the worst things. Like, if I don't want to do something, I'll make someone do it and I'll make them think it's they're doing something good and then they'll do something bad and I'll just run off and I'll be like, oh, I had nothing to do with it. That's not very nice, is it, Josh? No, but I only do that when like I'm irritated with someone. Like, yeah. I'll use someone else to get back at them. Well, what would you feel just if so they did that I this? don't get in trouble. Yeah, but what would you feel if someone did the same to you? No one can, because no one can manipulate like I can. Otherwise, they would have used it against me already. Don't you feel bad afterwards? Do you not feel that maybe you shouldn't have done that? Do you feel a bit guilty and remorseful? Yeah. Yeah? And the difference also is that's coming from inside. It's not something you just have put on your face. No. It's something really true, isn't it? I remember in the beginning, you really had very little remorse and you really didn't yeah. care too much about people's feelings and I think they have managed to bring those feelings to the front That's for you. That's because people didn't care about mm. my feelings. That's right. Okay, should we have a think about your goals yeah. from last term? Yep. 
Hello. Hi. Hi. Can we push the door, please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Along with his dads, Phil and Stig, Josh is meeting with his case coordinator, Kirsty, to set his targets for his final term at the school. OK, so your emotional behavioural one was, I can manage conflict using words and holding my own body safely. What do you think for that one? I don't know, I was thinking, like, I can share my emotions. Mm -hmm. Say a bit more. Like, because when I'm upset, I normally, like, look angry. And <coughs> when I'm sad, I just look angry. Basically, all my emotions look angry. I think that's a really so, insightful thing to say, Josh. Yeah, to show my emotions a bit more would be quite good. Yeah. Mm. So they're feelings that sometimes are a bit more vulnerable than angry feelings. Mm. I mean, thinking about that makes me think a bit about your ending here. Yeah. Because um, this will be your last proper term here. Mm -hmm. So I think right. it's really important time for you to be able to show lots of different feelings. Mm. Excited ones and sad ones. Mm. For a child at eight who's not showing empathy towards mm. other people, is that something that can be learned? Somewhere in him, he did have some capacity for empathy, but he couldn't access that. There were too many other priorities in his mind in terms of managing and surviving. And so, yes, I do think it's something that can be learned. Right, Josh, can you bring your chair over, please? Huh? Bring your chair around. I don't. I don't. Now, one of the things that you need to do with word problems is to separate the words from the figures. No, Josh, Josh, it's not safe having that around your neck. Josh, I'm not going to let you have that round your neck, so we're going to take that off. I'll take it, thank you. Can I have it back? Well, I'll take it. Over the first few weeks of his last term, Josh's behaviour deteriorates. OK, let go. Let go. I'm going to take, take that. It's important no, that you me, hand that over, please. Pass to me, pass to me. No, it's wrong. No, Josh, this is just becoming a distraction now. We've seen this behaviour all week. If you don't do work now, then you're going to have to do it during play. At the end of this term, Luke will be leaving to join a special educational needs school. You can turn it around, and Joe, what, Luke, I reckon you will. I've got a lot of belief in you, young man. I was going to come back up to check on Luke, because he said he was feeling a bit angry. Yeah, because um, when I came up, Luke had said to me that he was just sitting there thinking about old times when he used okay. to be in this room. And I think oh, okay. it's quite important for him to sort of be here and have some yeah. time here and then probably do some work in here whilst reminiscing in this room. That's great that Luke's been able to use his words to yeah. say that this is his last term. Yeah. So he's probably thinking about all the time that he's been here. Yeah. Luke, it's great that you were able to have a chat with Dee about that, yeah? Lukey, Lukey, come in here, no, please. Luke. Come in here, please. Take yourself back inside. Come inside, please. Come on, Luke. Come on, have a sit down, buddy. You don't need to kick at me, do you? I think you need to take yourself to the pod. OK, this is the choice now. A bit later, I'm expecting you to say sorry to Reese. Sorry, Reese. When you get angry, mm -hmm. what does it feel like? I just feel stressy and like I need some time alone. Like, don't really want to talk to anyone when I'm stressed. In terms of him processing his ending, I've been pretty impressed with him actually because quite often we do see a deterioration. And mildly with Luke, we have, but not hugely actually. I mean, I've seen him really be able to talk about feeling sad in quite a balanced way, which takes quite a lot of um, maturity, actually. 
Although it's great that you're moving on, there's probably some sad feelings in there too, aren't there? I'm doing that because it's under my eyes. Okay. Ten-year-old Daniel Lee is having regular therapy sessions to manage her outbursts. Working with lead nurse Kirsty, she's finding strategies to help her understand her emotions. You see all these glitters? Yeah. These are the things that might make you do things you don't mean. So what do you think the red one might be? Anger and frustration. Okay, what are the things that make you feel angry and frustrated? Getting bullied. Getting bullied. Okay, so can you empty some of that glitter onto this anger and frustration one? Put as much as you think you need. When I'm angry or upset. I usually get destructive sometimes when I get aggressive and all sorts. How do you feel afterwards? <laughs> Frustrated again. What do you think this one is? is Blue is the lonely, sad and lonely. Sad and lonely. So let's empty them in. And there goes the angry and frustrated feelings, the sad and lonely feelings. So they're all jumbled up in there, all those thoughts and feelings. Maybe when things get a bit out of control, all your feelings get all jumbled up. You think maybe that happens? Yes. Yeah. It's a bit like being a detective. You almost have to pick up clues and try and work out what's going on with little bits of information. But to begin with, it's really just building a relationship and, and helping them to thrive in this environment. I want you to try and wait before you do anything and watch your bottle until all the glitter has settled. Can this be glued into your book there? Can yes, can you pick the thing off off the floor, please? Can you not just give me it? Can you not just give me it? Sorry. It would be nice if we actually... Josh, can I have it, please? We'll do. Can I have it? Please? That's better. Okay. Uh, Josh, I will take it off you if you're going to throw things at people. No. Right. As they go to leave, we often see a return to some of the behaviours that brought them here. I was using the string as a strategy. They become very, very attached with us. So the letting go of here brings up a lot of pretty primitive stuff. We're going to start discussing Josh. I just wonder about what his fears are and how he's going to push the boundaries and I don't want him to fail and just how to support him really. With just two months left before leaving Gloucester House, Josh goes on his last school trip. A week at Avon Tyrrell in the New Forest. So hey! oh, nice but he finds it harder and harder to take instructions from the adults. Josh, can we talk about this? No! We're holding the boundaries and you seem to think that you can just be rude and do what you want and that there aren't going to be any boundaries, but there are. You'd rather no, be... to be honest, I don't really give a shit about right. the activities. So you'd rather be in control mm. than do the activities. You know when you do feel angry, mm -hmm. how does that feel? At first it's not anger, it's frustration. And then I start to feel a bit cold and then I start to get angry and then I just explode. I feel like he presented something really interesting at Avon Tyrrell. 
I felt an inkling of something as soon as he got there, but then it just grew and grew and grew. On the penultimate day, he runs away and is caught miles from the campsite. I just find it easier to be angry and I feel like I'm just going to burst. You are not filling my house again! Get off me! You were, you were you right. are not filling my house again! You two, or, do you want a third person? You are not filling my I think, house I think again. he should go home. I'm no. sorry. I think, it, I think, it's, I think no. he should go home. No, I don't want to go yeah, home. I'm painful, but I think he should go home. You always very much like, it doesn't matter what I do, you're going to send me away anyway. And it didn't feel it was to do with that incident as such. It felt like, well, whatever happens now, you're sending me away from the school. It's a very crucial decision, this. And it's one that you'll probably always remember. Hi, Stig, this is Nell here. Sadly, Josh has not managed and we think he is going to need to be collected. Um, very sad to be making this. I kind of feel a bit embarrassed if I show people that I'm sad or upset. Back at Gloucester House, Josh's behaviour worsens. And he's sent home again. I think you felt like we made a decision yesterday, the grown-ups that you weren't in control of, and that's very difficult for you, especially because it sounds like you really disagreed with it. Yeah, A, I wasn't in control of it, and B, I had no idea about it. You did say that you really missed running around and that it was so boring being good all the time. Yeah, because it is. Mm. I think sometimes they have to find a new way to be, because their sense of self is so based on being the one who's naughty and the one who does things wrong. But that's really scary. It's like you're learning to live all over again. Josh, we're doing a countdown. We expect you to take yourself in. I'll get it, don't you? I'll get it. Do you want to listen to me? Because you, you were upset I wasn't clear with you yesterday, so I'm going to be really clear with you. We think the repair needs to happen with Shah before you cook with John, otherwise we don't think that makes any sense. You fucking <laughs> I don't think, I don't, it doesn't make any sense to me otherwise. I've already done the repair with Shah, and that's that. Shah, Shah no, said she no, thought it was no, very no, difficult no, for you no. to really think about it. So I want to be really clear with you, okay? Magically sealing its many locks and bolts behind those who had just left. We're eating down in the kitchen, Mrs. Weasley whispered, meeting them at the bottom of the stairs. Harry dear, if you'll just tiptoe across the hall, it's through this. So we've got our hot dog, that's you. Do you want some fried onions on the top? Can we have barbecue sauce? We can have barbecue sauce, yeah. Have you got any barbecue sauce? <laughs> yes. Here we go, let's stick a bit of barbecue. Oh, this is well. Check you out. So we'll put loads of barbecue sauce on. Today, Daniel Lee will be sitting in exam. Oh, it's time in there. There you go, guys. Perfect. Thanks very Thank much, you. Now. In the past, she's never been able to cope with the pressure of tests. So we've got an hour, and if you want to take a learning break to do some colouring, you just let me know. Okay? All right. It's such a persecuting thing to be sat in a little room away from everyone else, but she managed it, and it's a huge achievement. Right, OK, so... When you go into yeah. secondary school, what's something that's the same and then something that's different? Uh, uniform. Uniform is different. And what's something that's going to be the same? Uh, something that's the same, probably that you're going to get some really good friends. OK, lovely. Thank you, Josh. After a difficult few weeks, Josh's behaviour has started to improve again. 
you're always wanting to go forward, but occasionally you go backwards to go forwards, and I think that's probably one of those moments right. where we're going back a space, but actually it's him allowing himself to, to, to go forward in, in that sense. Mm. Before Josh leaves Gloucester House, his clinical diagnosis is being reviewed by psychiatrist Dan McQueen. How do you think things have changed since you've been here? Uh, I can control myself a lot more. Uh, I can say my feelings and show my feelings a lot more. Mm -hmm. I can work by myself mm -hmm. and with others. Mm -hmm. uh, anymore? That's great. That's, yeah. that's quite a lot. I think when you're stressed or anxious and you can become a bit controlling of people we call it oppositional and defiant disorder so when people deliberately do the opposite of what they're asked what do you think of that yeah, yeah. He will still have those triggers and reminders about the past, but it's more how he's now more equipped to manage those moments. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. They look lovely. I, love I think we, all we've ever wanted really for Josh is to be, and that sounds awful, isn't it, to be like everybody else, but to... Yeah. To, to, yeah. That's what we have been fighting yeah. for. We have been fighting for Josh to actually have a future. I've got that now. Oh, look, ah, oh, it's Grandma. It's our first Christmas. Oh, wow. Yes! Whoa! Look at all this! Look at this! Whoa! It's so wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Look at all this! Oh, my oh, God. God. Look at this. I'm Josh. Uh, my age is five. I have a brief brother called Reese and Timiri. I didn't have a very nice past, so I don't want it to keep popping up and I don't want to keep remembering it. The trajectory for Josh, had he not been helped, would have been extremely worrying. And he might have done some awful things to other people. But I definitely think that will be very different and hopeful now. This morning, Mum Danette is in for a meeting about Daniel Lee's progress. You'll get the SATS results for reading and um, all that, and she, she did pretty well. Actually, in the end, she enjoyed it, she liked it. I think that's why she understands things more. Yeah. Now she get more about feelings and that because now she starts to talk about her feelings. I mean, it's amazing. It's like though her, her kind of repertoire for her world is getting bigger and it's involving feelings and making yeah. things better and in quite an ordinary way. You know, yeah. that's brilliant. Yeah. What are you doing, Daniel? Have you made some cakes? Yeah, I forgot to give them in the garden party. Yeah. So we can make the daughters in here. She's like a little joker. She can see things on the TV now and you'll hear her in hysterics. It's just like, wow, this is a child that never used to smile before. Mm. Say thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you very much. Can you say thank you very much to Mum? Is she happier now? A lot more happier. Are you happier now? I love a lot more happier. Josh, <laughs> 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 Now I can. Thanks, right. Daniel. This is a. A joyous moment. Do you think yeah. she's more trusting now? Yeah, because she's not around a lot of people that have already labelled her as a bad child. And she's never been a bad child. She's just been a misunderstood child. That's it, really. No one really understood her. Hello, baby. Oh, you have a good day. Princess Penny. My princess Penny. Okay. What is that all the love I can give you? Yeah. Like give me some more. No. I need some more. I'm gonna be starving until I get home. I need some more. A little bit more. Oh, thank you. Okay. Have a good day. It is the last day of term, as we know, and we also have five people to say goodbye to. 
everyone leaving, coming and going. Are you sad that you're leaving Gloucester House? Oh, I am sad, but you know, it's um, just life, isn't it? Well, I've been here for nearly three and a half years now, so time to move on, eh? Thank you to all the staff who have helped me so much. Oh, and I'm going to miss everyone. Is your future written when you're three or four? You're given a blueprint when you're three or four. You're given an understanding of the world. And I think that with the right sort of support, that things can be turned around and things can be much more hopeful. And I, I feel very passionately about that. I know that you give the staff a hard time here sometimes, but I feel very lucky to have met you all. And I really hope things go well for you in your new schools. I can't really think about I'm leaving. Even though I've had hard times at this school, it's hard to think about it though. So I miss every person here. Yeah, we'll miss you too, Luke. You know when you like think about yourself being grown up? Mm. When you imagine your life, do you have like have a nice house, have a nice car, have a nice wife, and have nice kids, and have a nice dog, and live happily. That's what I would like. And I hope to see you soon. I don't think really anyone should be written off at any stage, particularly if you can get children when they're young, you know, even if they've got these horrifically disturbing histories, I think there's always hope. I think to work in a place like this, you have to believe there's always hope. And I think the children pick up on that in terms of them starting to believe that things can be different and they can move on and have a good and happy life.